for me on shortage. <laughs> welcome, 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 everybody. Welcome to VO Talk 211. Uh, <laughs> hope everybody's doing well as per usual. Uh, go and, uh, oh, you're in the corner. Uh, you go, and go and support uh, Skinny Play if you uh, want uh, just one product. Uh, I have a promo code for everybody. Uh, and it's in the chat right now, as per usual. Uh, I get no kickbacks, but if you want uh, uh, more than two, uh, use this referral link. Uh, then they know we've sent you, and uh, if you buy enough, we may get a kickback, and it helps to keep the light on with this bloody <laughs> electricity pricing here in Europe. <laughs> uh, Everything's going up, for God's sakes. So. Yeah, uh, our power bill is up 100%, basically, from a few months ago. Is it? Right yeah. On. <laughs> Jolly. Go Ukraine. Go Ukraine. <laughs> But uh, yeah, uh, that's about that. And uh, oh yeah, uh, come join our Discord. It's uh, super fun. Uh, we have a uh, hundred and eighty people there. So uh, Sweetheart uh, joined. What was it yesterday? How many are we? We're uh, oh, a hundred and eighty-one people. Yay! There you go. And uh, that's where uh, you can also find. Uh, the, uh, Hendrik stuff, Steve stuff, John stuff, etc. And uh, I think John is on there too, but I need to have him come around more often, but he works too much. <laughs> so uh, there's uh, that. Uh, yeah, uh, how have you been? It's a week. Went to Edmonton and back. Inspected a house that I'm doing for a long time client. So everything's good. Which is surprising usually, and well, uh, out of all of it, only one thing—not that it got missed, but I don't think that they have gotten that far. But I want to make sure it doesn't get forgotten that they didn't drill a hole from the conduit into the box where the cable's supposed to come out, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, I'm wall mounting an old Bio System Three and a fucking Bio Vision Four Sixty Five in that house. Because the dude is just in love with the TV. And upstairs I'm hanging a BB-12 that he bought from me. So. Nice. It's going to be sometime in August, I'm thinking. But it depends, right? If I get the visas early, then I'm just going to be so <laughs> Do a rush job. <laughs> No, I'm not going to do a rush job. I'm just going to do no job. I'm just going to fuck off and have him worry about it with somebody else. Nick can go fix it. <laughs> Nick? <laughs> yeah. Oh, by the way, the Eric uh, joined us. Nice. <laughs> so, Hello, Eric. You're quiet tonight, aren't you? <laughs> but yeah, so that's, uh, that's basically, I don't know, the gist of the week. I need to start. I bought the freaking, what's it called? Uh, the The box uh for the equipment box so this week i'm gonna try to set everything up in the basement so it's like you know all the wires and shit it's a it's a it's a it's a freaking mess over there i hate it maybe get an electrician here too and uh, i'm thinking of switching a few lutron lights in my house well in this house one of the dimmers just doesn't work so as so i set it, it up died but, like you... taking it out the wall in your old place and putting no it in no it, it it will not fucking turn on it's a three-way switch and i had the uh remote dimmer and i have the main dimmer mm -hmm. it's the same leds that are in the entire goddamn house because i have to change all of them and essentially the purpose of it is the laundry room here is upstairs we're right beside my room so when you open the laundry uh doors because it's like a double swing door right mm -hmm. Then there's a sensor there or aux sensor there, so it turns on the laundry room light inside, but it also should turn on the lawn, the light in the hallway. But the dimmer goes to 100% that it is on, but no light is on. Hmm. And when you press it, it just shuts off. You press it again, it turns on. So I don't know what the fuck.com. So I'm gonna just pull that dimmer out, and maybe replace it with a different one, maybe because it's a I think it's a six. Uh, NA, and I, I'm gonna probably go with the ND instead. 
and uh, yeah and probably pull some electrical stuff downstairs in the basement so i can service the box hooked up the bio center too fucked up the whole thing now because like now you have to press list and then radio right i talked mm-hmm. about it the other day but the socket unit is dead and i don't know if it's even if they even have any parts repair uh, available for it if i ship it out i have to talk to my tech about it but yeah that's about the whole that's about the gist of the whole week not much just another Apparently, I have a knack to pick in uber shitty weather for driving because this week when we went out to Edmonton, because Nick, Nick went with me, mm-hmm. it was fucking just treacherous. It, it rained, snowed again, middle of freaking May. So, a lot of laughs. Sounds uh, unpleasant. Sounds Canadian, is what it is. Yeah. Oh, uh, people, uh, maybe uh, check your. Uh... Uh, your email because some dealers are uh, fearing what we've said and uh, there's uh, emails uh, going out as in like uh, dude's price is going up <laughs> uh, if you want to stuff at the current price might as well buy it now I'm not entirely sure uh, dealers yet know what all is going up but uh, everything I guess eh? who knows maybe Apparently, it's still uh, an utter pain in the ass to get any parts for a- a- anything, really. Hmm. Also, uh, if anybody has a question uh, and you want a guaranteed answer to it, Super Chats are open. Uh, they also help us keep the lights on. And uh, if you just want to give us some money to buy more beer, though, that's also pleasant. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, we've bought tons of it from the Super Chats. Yeah. <laughs> an m3 maybe by now <laughs> yeah but anyway so yeah the rumor's real essentially yeah obviously at this point of time i wonder what the 90s are gonna go up to i honestly think that what i said two three podcasts ago i think that's what that's what their plan is or goal or agenda that they're basically gonna price them out of the purchasable range yeah because, because it's a flagship speaker and they don't want to eol it but, uh, That's right. But they also want a bit uber unavailable too. Yeah. Uh, on Discord, Frederick uh, said, and I wonder if this is correct, and I can see it being correct, that uh, the price is going to increase on the 15th of uh, June, and the 28th were supposed to go from 13.250 to 14.250. Fourteen two fifty euros, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Which is uh, how much is that? That's in... like an eight percent increase or so. I don't know what that is in Canadian rupees. Uh, I'm trying to translate it now. What are we doing here? Uh, Twenty thousand bucks. Nineteen two nineteen two nine five. So plus tax and shit. That's that's uh, that's twenty one thousand dollars. Sad. I mean, uh, that's a that's a heck of a lot of money. Fortunately, I think twenty eights are probably still worth it, more or less. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish it, it, they didn't obviously go up, but I mean, it's not up to us. <laughs> uh, I also can't look in their books and see what the margins and uh, is is on this sort of stuff. Uh, especially nowadays with the unavailability of chips and that sort of thing. So who's making that goddamn money? The the chip companies? Seemingly. They're the one with the swinging dick, right? They're the ones that swing a dick because they can say, okay, well, we don't have that. Or do you want it? But this is how much. P- pretty much, yeah. But I also feel it's that you're buying uh, slots in the line for chip production. Mm. I mean, it's sort of like uh, what you see in uh, food stores, right? They, they, you pay an additional uh, fee to like your Tesco's or your Walmart or whatever to have it like within like eye height. Eye level or some shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Candy in the lower for the kids, right? And so Yeah. On. Well, also the A and B products. So it's probably similar with the production processes for the, the – uh, 
the, the semiconductor uh, manufacturers. Yeah. I mean, I also have a, a, a suspicion that it's still going on that the massive companies like, well, name it something like Tesla, Ford, uh, General Motors, uh, they're hoarding this stuff like crazy. Because well, everything's yeah, a switch now. Going. Mm -hmm. Like even even your like your Windows switch usually was just a relay. Now it's an actual chip. <laughs> of course, because it's got the it knows where to stop, right? Because it used yeah. to be off of relays, and now plus the sensitivity, the resistance, so it doesn't chop off your fingers when you have them. Yeah, or you can oh, go yeah. a little bit. But then you press too far and it goes all the way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so annoying when that's too sensitive. <laughs> yeah. Mine isn't bad, actually, in the Audi. But yeah, when you press, like, I like it that it does also in the back windows too, when it does all of them. Yeah. So yeah, there's so, that. Yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, unpleasant, but it's apparently the time we live in. Uh, just go to your employer and ask for 10% more. See how that goes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Because that's basically staying at baseline at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a uh, it's it's insane where this is all going, and it's not. It's like it's definitely not fun. Not fun at all. But what else is going to go? How much do you think the the nineties are going to end up at? Do you think they're going to end up at hundred thousand euros? They already are. Are they? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they are. That's if they're going to price them out of existence, I can really see them pushing them to 125, 150 somewhere. They just don't really feel like making them. I think 150 would be. It would be a massive uh, slap in the face, but. I don't know. I'm the one petting my belly because I got them. <laughs> you should get so... a cat in the. <laughs> <laughs> you got the white 90s that are extra probably going to be now 15,000 US for those goofy sales and shit yes uh, somebody uh, tweeted at me today that uh, there's a lot of there's a what you call it a hi-fi show in Munich going on yeah and it, like, like they agree with you, what you said a lot of other companies uh, the total system costs is more but then you also have the freedom to how to spend that money, I guess, is. I mean, if you go well, for you... something like Focal, right? Like, you don't have to get 10 grand amps. You can. Yeah, but I think at this point, like, you finesse the source, not the speakers anymore, or the amplification system, because that's taken care of fully digital, right? Mm -hmm. With, you know, with acoustic attenuation to the room, it's in, which you would, no matter what speakers you would have to have. Uh, or no matter what speakers you'd have, you would have to have a, a, a some sort of a fucking computer EQ that that the the sources would need to run through to compensate the room, just like it does it on a on a nineties and fifties and twenty eights, I guess. Yeah. But, oh, for sure. I mean, I still love B and O. It's just I wouldn't be so annoyed with the price increases. <laughs> if this was the sole reason for the price increases, right? Like, oh, stuff got more expensive, we're upping the price. Fine. But you did it in the last five years. I don't know why do you think it's only the last five years. Ever since I remember... Well, they've done it for longer always a than price that. Adjustment. But always. There was always something went up. Usually the price adjustment will happen around February because that's when it was the uh, the, the the store demo sale, right? Mm -hmm. In January because they kind of want to keep the traffic in somehow, right? So you fucking sell off all your shit on the walls and then you buy new and it comes with a new pricing. That's how I always remembered it. And dude, this is 10 years ago that I started when I started working in the B&O store, let alone the fact that... Uh, but was it always ten percent more? I don't remember, but it was always it should always moved. I was never paying attention to it. I just know the pricing changed when I went there. I'm like, oh fuck, this went up again. So, but I mean, it's yeah, it's just 
Maybe. When you look at uh, lap fives, lap five started, I think, at, uh, what was it, 18,500 US dollars? No, yeah. bullshit. Four, I think 14 or something like that was the first advertisement. It was very, they were super cheap. And they finished off at, what, 25 grand US? Yeah, I think the, 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 they ended up being 22 and a half here for the, the last version. So everything's gone up. And they always go up. I, and that's one of the things that when I was first started working in the B&O shop, Scott told me, like, you know what? This is one of the only systems that there's really no depreciation curve in some sense. Or if the depreciation curve is there, then it's a very, very, very slight curve. It's not like, you know, you bought a, a, a five magazine carousel Sony CD player first it's got no sex appeal and second of all it'll last you what maybe a few years nowhere near to what the 9000 and and serviceability of course because sony moves on per se any other manufacturers they just move on like you can't just roll into a fucking sony store now if there is even opened ones ever and bring them at your your five spin carousel and say can you guys send this to service that take your temperature are there sony stores I don't think there is anymore. I mean, I, I, th I know there's Samsung stores, but that's mostly mobile. No, but... I think there are all there, 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 there are no Sony shops, and we used to have Sony stores, like huge Sony stores here, man. I remember back in them all them many days. days. Boy, those were the good old times. <laughs> <laughs> Recording shit, but uh, yeah, that was uh, yeah, that was the era of CDs. I remember I had a, I, like I bought the top of the line Sony Discman before I moved on to the mini discs. It was like a centimeter thick. It was almost as thick as a case. It was sick, man. Battery life was awesome. Sound was great, but then again, BNO didn't have headphones at the time. Yeah, they had the, the weird poofy ones, the over ear. Well, they had the Forum 2s, which were shit, and they leaked a lot. <laughs> I think they were those are pretty shit from the start, really. Well, but they were they weren't shit back then because the bass wasn't invented, right? Yeah, that's kind of true. Like compare rock set to freaking some Skrillex or some shit. Like you know what I mean? Like those guys, they they people let no us know way. in chat if you were born pre bass or post bass. <laughs> I was I was pre pre basined. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, similar. <laughs> uh, by the way, might as well still a shill for Steve a little bit. Uh, he has a, a new video out, so uh, go and check that out. Oh, I paused it at the correct time. <laughs> Fuck, that sucks. <laughs> Steve Wake with his sil silky voice. Uh, Ooh, so tired, so so comfy. <laughs> oh yeah, man. But uh... <laughs> oh, I also had a question uh, regarding NL ML converters. Uh, so my buddy Carl has a, a BV14, and he was thinking about getting uh, a BSN9000, obviously, with an ML. It was bad for the 14. <laughs> yeah. With an ML NL converter, can you integrate them so that you can use the beer remote one without having to switch to IR mode? Yeah. What does he have for the mastering source? Uh, nothing yet. Like this is a, a he's planning on buying uh, to buy a BSN nine thousand. Well, that's exactly what I got. Well, I had. In my my apartment, nine thousand was connected to the via ML to the converter, mm -hmm. and that just sat on the network. So then you just go and the only thing that you change is uh, in your sources. Uh, fuck, I had this under music. Like you gotta look at the 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 ones the ones with the link, mm -hmm. the little link in front of it. And yeah, you go link CD, and it fires up to nine thousand, and then you just it, it plays through the it plays through the TV. Sweet. Yeah. Because I, I, like I I haven't touched an ML and L converter in like forever, so I wasn't sure how to set that up anymore, or whether you had to change over to IR mode. 
No, no, no. You gotta set it to I, uh, uh, audio master though. Yeah, that, and, that's uh, good. Connect the primary TV secondary. There's really nothing unless he has something else. Uh, I think it's just a BV14 with speakers attached to it at the moment. Mm-hmm. So sweet. That, uh, no, that, that works. I'll let I'll let him know. Uh... Yeah, it's very it's very simple. It takes a little bit of fiddling around because the converter doesn't really sometimes like the ML. There is no handshake. Mm-hmm. What I usually do is uh, if you fire up the converter, let it fully boot up, then turn on the 9000, let it sit for at least a minute, let them fucking hash out whatever they Here's need what. to hash out. <laughs> Who's what and where, and then go into the web interface and and correctly set it, and then it'll be fine. And do you have to set anything in the TV at that point still? Yes. Yeah, you gotta go to TV source. Uh, I mean the setup. Then you go to integration, and then uh, you tie it into the converter. And. Uh, yeah, then it asks you if is the system in the same room as the speakers. So you say yes, and then uh, it'll ask you, do you want the available sources to be listed uh, underneath all your shit, right? And so you say yes, and then just go to source setup, and then you just disable what you don't want to see and what you want to see, right? Which is basically you only have radio, uh, CD, and AUX. Yeah, but like, the AOX is tricky because if you go AOX, it actually goes to the line in, in the converter. It doesn't go to the AOX in the fucking 9000. So just so you all know. Not, well, not, he does have a record player, sense. so you can put that into the ML and L converter then on the AOX. <laughs> yeah, but just saying, like, that's, it's, it's, <laughs> it's weird how like, that works, but. It's nice that the, there's no AOX dash something <laughs> to say it's the different one. <laughs> It should have been uh, AOX too. Yeah, that's what it should have been. Because there is a, I think in old remotes there is a AOX too. A long, long, long time ago, I think it used to be. No, it was DVD too. AOX never existed, I think. Not sure. I I don't fully remember. We used to always have B and O around, and it was except for the like the uh, overture was unlinked and it just if you want music like whole house music it was just turn mm-hmm. up <laughs> just just play louder <laughs> that works <laughs> yeah well it's easier to pull cables here so everybody did have uh, uh they did have uh mastering installed yeah so- because you can I, just pull a baseboard off and just stuck the cable underneath it, right? Because there's always about, you know, a centimeter of a gap at least, like, from the ground to the drywall, purposely left, just in case shit gets wet. So, I mean, uh, our under floor sort of situation where we used to live, our basements anyway, like our basement was more storage. And in terms mm-hmm. of size, it was... Uh, it was about three meter by five meter and about a meter forty tall. Hmm. And then to get under the, your actual flooring, it was more crawl space. So you were like face in the dirt, like going like that underneath all the floor beams and shit. Oh fuck! <laughs> Super annoying. So that was like, yeah, we did that once and never again. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not, I'm not down with that kind of nonsense. <laughs> No, that's the, I guess, the European, or at least the continental way of doing things. Well, they don't have basements, more or less. They have the same kind of nonsense in BC. Like, they just make crawl spaces. They don't have basements. Like, we have basements here. I don't know why. Like, why is it that just Alberta, Saskatchewan, like, all the other provinces have it, but not many in, in, uh, well, depends where. Like, if you go to the coastal BC, then it's not there. As far as the the basements, it may be the soil it's built on. As in, yeah, like, but beside it is a fucking apartment with three stories underground parking. 
Yeah, but I guess it depends on... I guess the tech they didn't have back then, right? I mean, here anyway, the reason you don't really have large basements is because everything's sand. Mm. So, like, your your slab is, like, wider than the house is usually, just to, so the whole house... And even then, it still settles, and your house usually, like, a degree or two settles one way or the other over time. Mm-hmm. But uh, you can't just, like, build in sand because it all collapses in on <laughs> itself. Yeah, that's... Uh, happened here, actually, in uh, Bankers Hall when they were building it. I don't think I lived in Canada yet. Or maybe I have, because those first building they built and the second one, the parkade came in and they lost like uh I think two out of four floors of underground parking. Oh, that's and, they, a, and they and they could never recover it. That's a bit of an oopsie. Fucking went over the weekend. It fell in. Nobody died at least. Oh, lucky. Yeah, they buried everything, equipment, all the shit. Oops. Fucking happy Monday, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Sucked. So, yeah, how was the comparison? What is your opinion on it? Because I already know the winner. The winner is very dependent, I feel, on what you want to do. Uh, one thing that really surprised me actually getting like a db meter out is that i had them playing roughly give or take a db right uh at the same song at the same volume but the 18 sounded a lot louder to the point where i wasn't trusting like literally the same db meter app and uh i have a feeling that could potentially be how the, the 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 sort of curve is because for sure the 17 kicks a lot harder uh and the bass is a lot fuller and more rounded mm -hmm. but it's kind of i don't know if you're not pushing it that sort of mid-range doesn't appear to much higher up in the volume range where i could record it but then you have no sense of scale anymore and also uh, I'm not sure if my microphone itself is going to distort because of the pressure, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, yeah, maybe. I think well, the volume is definitely different in those two speakers, arguably. I mean, uh, if if uh, because I, I I even in editing I I I checked as much as I could where. Uh, uh, the, the, they were roughly, I forget now, I think I had them set to 40, somewhere between 45 and 50-ish volume on the TV. And that is uh, quite decent for normal listening, maybe not full-on attentive, like I'm going to sit here and do nothing else listening, but it's, it's more than a background music, quite a bit more. Like... If I just wanted background music, I have them at like 35 to 40 ish. And that's sort of like radio, but you can still talk. And this is sort of the, the point where, uh, depending on what song you listen to, you either start shouting or like, could you turn it down a bit? <laughs> sort of that range, if that makes sense. But indeed, to me as well, like in the room, the 18 sounded sort of bigger and louder but they weren't and uh it's at most give or take a db here or there it depends on the notes also uh so i have a feeling like the to put it this way like um if the 17s were playing let's say 60 ish db most mm -hmm. of that was from around 40 hertz to like one 50 200 hertz and then it dropped down and it came up a bit at the the very top end because i could see that in my phone eq with the mm -hmm. 18s if it was playing at the same sort of db level that was more from around 180 ish db uh but all the way flat until the top and then it went up so it, you have that sort of peak pq curve uh, inversion mm -hmm. really 
And I think that's partially maybe why it sounded louder, uh, because more of the, the, the spectrum was filled to the same level. Now, if you really want to uh, use this as movie speakers uh, and main speakers, I would say go 17s all day. Mm -hmm. But if you want something for like more female vocals and sort of looks and shit. <laughs> well, also it depends on uh, like mid 90s better. and backwards music, right? Like that same era before the bass was really invented. Then I mm -hmm. would almost say yeah. go for the 18s. Yeah. Uh, and I have a feeling that's partially why they, <laughs> thinking back on it, this I have a feeling this is why they sold more because the people that buy B and O tend to like the music of mid nineties and backwards. <laughs> You're at that age where you can sort of throw that sort of money around, and then it's like, well, I like, uh, I don't know, uh, Fleetwood Mac, Queen, Dire Straits, that sort of thing. There's not a lot, a lot of thumping bass in there, so you'll never miss it. No, but they're real instruments, right? Like that's the difference. Where nowadays you don't really have much of the, of if, if any, as far as the no modern music is for real instruments, right? Everything is, even if it's a real instrument, it's it's sampled off of a fucking keyboard. Like it's it's not really, you know, yeah. you can play violin, guitar, and and a trumpet on us on the same same keyboard. Mm -hmm. Nobody would ever know. Uh, Sonny so, says the. I, the 18 sounded more spacious. That spacious sound is absolutely the function of the acoustic lens. Because the yeah. the beer sound 2 versus the level has that exact same airiness that the level will just not have. And that's literally that lens design where it sort of throws it around and, uh, yeah, it, it aerates the top end specifically. Uh, mm -hmm. generic enthusiast over on Twitch says, could it be the proximity height of the drivers? <laughs> You're a tall one. <laughs> well, I'm tall, but the microphone is literally on top of the lens. And, uh, the camera sat obviously in the same position. I'm looking, uh, right now and the front of the eight, because I haven't moved them. The, the front of the 18 is two inches further back than the 17. So, if anything, the 17 should have the advantage in, for that uh, scenario. Did you just play one speaker at a time? No, both, but I uh, matched the second next to the other one. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, currently, uh, uh, what you call it, the other 17 is sitting right next to that cabinet, like over there. I'm going to uh, say, though, poor wire management, though. Yeah, I know, but these are the, <laughs> the spare second ones. <laughs> but to make er everything equal, I literally took it out of the wall there with an extension cord and put it next to the 17. Uh, mm. and, and I put it above the, the uh, what you call it? Sofa. Yeah, so so it not to like limit it in any which way. Because... Stereo music played over a single speaker will always sound weird. Mm -hmm. So even that sort of left uh, channel that you lose, I, I kind of wanted that in there, even though it came from the back. But I mean, like nothing changed. So I, I more or less measured it cr out correctly. The, the microphone stayed in the same position. It's a directional mm. mic, so it shouldn't have too much effect anyway. But, uh, yeah, it, it, thinking about it, the 17s for the price are still surprisingly good. Yes, 100%. I mean, if you look on the secondhand market, you basically have the choice of a set of 18s or two sets of 17s here. Mm -hmm. Because uh, a secondhand set of... Uh, 18s in oak will be around four and a half grand or so, four thousand, maybe top end five grand if they're immaculate. But uh, an immaculate pair of 17s is anywhere between 1500 and two grand. Yeah. 
So uh, if you're on a budget, uh, you may lose out on the looks, but you'll have four speakers. And if you like Super. to listen loud, you'll definitely be winning at that point. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a it's a weird toss up. And looking at the the, the PQ curves, the 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 phone app gives because if you hold it on its side right you don't just get the db mm -hmm. meter but you yeah. also get which frequencies do what it's kind of funny to see that inversion of the sort of hump low up and then the 18 is low low up flat but that mm. even that doesn't tell the whole story because you don't really the pq curve doesn't give you the sense of airiness that the acoustic lens definitely does. I mean, also, if you want to listen in one position, then 17s are perfectly fine because you just aim them. But if you have these, like I have, like side speakers, the 18s are be do better at that because they project out that way. Like they mm -hmm. fill that whole 120-ish degrees spectrum sort of. Whereas the 17s are more sort of like we're beaming here. Yeah. I still like to look at the 18s. I don't like the sound of them much, to be honest, but uh, they are a beautiful speaker. And it's either you love it or you hate it. Like, you know, some people that just can't stand looking at it. And I'm like, okay, at least they're on, I guess. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's a bit of a... I, I almost, I, this is one of these B&O things where even I, back in the day, would have always gone 18s. But now the 17s are EOL. I'm kind of questioning, like, because initially when I saw the fives, I didn't like them that much. They were, like, they just looked too futuristic somehow when they came out to me anyway. In terms mm -hmm. of looks, I preferred the ones. I still love the ones, but the fives are sort of like, now they look good, but now you can't get them anymore other than second hand. Yeah. But I I have the feeling the B and O over time with the seventeens did the same to me, kinda, of, where I don't know, we used to back in the day have be allowed four thousands and I always liked those. I mean that th those were great. The 4000s were awesome speakers, man. I mean, uh, pound for pound, the 17s are a lot better. Of course. I mean, it's, it's not even in the same ballpark anymore. No. But uh, I, I just wonder what made me think back in the day, even like why 18s were a lot better. But it, I don't know. Maybe it's the partially the looks that are hard to go by. It could be the design bias, yeah. The, the the look of it. Oh, I should. Uh, uh... Some people hated them when I remember in the store when they first came in, came out, and like we still have the eight thousands, right? Mm -hmm. And people were like, no, the eight thousands look much better. These are terrible. All these slats and shit in it. And I'm like, I don't know. Some people hate the lap threes look, but. That's what it is. I, w I wonder what this poll is going to say. Who Who's going to do uh, the 17s over 18s or vice versa? I mean, uh, figure that out how anybody wants. Uh, because, I mean, take into account money and all that, if, if you like. It, it's up to you. Uh, I mean, I, I personally... I choose looks. A lot of people are choosing looks. I always liked the 8000s, but when the 18s came out, this was like, to me anyway, this was like, yes, this is the way it should have been. Like, instantly, as soon as the 18s were out, it's like, yeah, this is better than the 8000s. Oh, they were by far. I mean, to the me anyway, like, definitely like helped it. Yeah. the 18s instantly made the 8000s look old. Yes. Whereas, uh, I mean, by a similar time frame, looking back, uh, the fives don't look old. The ones don't look old. No, but the 8000s do date themselves because of the, the thick foot 
and just like this whole pencilish look to it, right? Yeah. That they don't have that sleekness that was that Thorsten put into the 18s. Yeah, the most people are, are pro 18. <laughs> I hope they don't freaking discontinue those speakers for some goofy reason. That'd be very silly. Yes, I, I would start to punch people over there at that point. <laughs> if any- now you don't have anything to sell at the end at the end of the day. Like you start what with the twenty eights as the first speaker. In terms of the B and O Halo product. I think you could make a point that 18s are more of the Halo product than the 90s even are. And by this, I don't mean sound, obviously. Mm-hmm. But the, in terms of the design, the looks, the iconism of B&O for, what, 40 plus years now. Like, it's all there. Yeah. It's it, it's to the point where they are so much B and O that they're more B and O than just about anything else, and you can what tell by do? the homage uh, of the design itself because they were not that far off of eight thousands really. Well, they're almost the same height. Yeah. So. So it's yeah, it's it's a it's an interesting thing. I mean, if you have no space whatsoever for wall mounting anything, seventeens uh, are by far and away the best way to go. Uh, if you want to wall mount them, though, I would suggest don't buy the B and O wall brackets because they're dumb. Uh, <laughs> but get the S to B ones because for some reason they thought of everything except putting the logo on the right side. <laughs> For which? For the seventeens. Uh, For the seventeens. Yeah, if you're wall mounting them with the B and O. Yeah, it's so goofy. It's upside down. And the thing or is, they, they must have looked at this right because you have two positions. You can uh, either have them straight out the wall, then you can have the logo correct side up, or you can like tilt them a bit. But if you tilt them a bit, then they're obviously facing down, but then you can only really hang him with the logo upside down. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't uh, wasn't a thought-through process, I don't think, on their side when they did that. Because Thorsten didn't agree with it at all, I remember that. Actually, I had a conversation with him about it when I was in uh, Copenhagen in 2016. Uh, I actually asked him about it, but for some reason, it just they just pushed through. In, Sometimes uh, he doesn't have all the say, I guess. Uh, in case anybody needs the link. To what? To the correct brackets <laughs> from STP. Mm. Like they, the, the the bottom left picture is literally how it hangs on the B and O bracket, which is fortunately for for me, like. These ones are so high up that you can't read it on the aluminium, but you definitely can on uh, the black and white ones. Of course. But it's also, I think, because on the the white ones, it's black paint, and on the black ones, it's white paint, and on the aluminium ones, it's like lightly engraved. So the engraving sort of fades away with na- any natural well, light. Well, it's laser etched. It's yeah. laser etched. And I think they laser etch it also on the black and white. Yeah, but just did they then the fill it with, like... I don't know. Because I'm pretty sure on the black ones, the, the lettering is white for Bang & Olufsen, and on the white ones, it's black for Bang & Olufsen. At least on the 17s. I can't tell if it's etched, but it looks like it's printed more or less than anything. But it could be etched. I've got a magnifying glass I'm going to see. <laughs> so. uh, yeah. Dude, it's laser etched even on the black. 
lab, lab to, uh, 11. It's etched into the uh, laser etched. So essentially what you're looking at is a, is a, just a ref aluminum reflection. Yeah, I found a good picture of it, but it, it, I mean, it looks fairly white, but even if it is, it's like, that's so mm -hmm. visible upside down on the black cover. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't like that. They, I, I just don't understand why they went ahead with it, but at the end of the day, we're kicking a dead horse here because it's no longer a product in production. Uh, yeah, but it's still I mean for the 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 diehard fans uh, between us all. Uh, if if you come across yeah. a pair. Uh, and you're looking for something B and O. Uh, yeah, they're a good set of speakers. When do you think they'll discontinue the nineties? Twenty twenty five? Give it ten years in production and fuck off on a hundredth birthday? That same year? Yeah, by the way, these are the white ones. The logo is definitely black. Mm -hmm. They do look good. Yeah. So, what do you think? Uh, um, yeah, it's, well... Because they can't have them outpriced to, 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 to ridiculous and, and just keep them in there so nobody can buy them. Because right? that, that doesn't make sense. Because at the end of the day, there's still some shakes in Dubai and shit. They don't give a fuck about the money. They can still order it, right? If they don't want to make it happen or if they don't want to manufacture it, how do you? Well, you know, I guess the my current thought is then then what becomes the Halo product? What becomes the 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 like they have to get something new, right? In the meantime, I think they're gonna make something between the 28s and 50s, and they're gonna push that. Well, I wouldn't be surprised, but like if you end uh, the '90s, then the '50s become the Halo product, which that's right. I think that's where they they end up with it, because then it's still much more controllable than manufacturing '90s, right? Because like they are not in charge of the molding process, really. They just buy these things. So if these fucking guys decide to, you know, up the price on that, or just decide not to, like we don't want to do this anymore, then what, right? Yeah, they're doing it in a, in a fucking diesel engine casting facility. <laughs> yeah, they, they they've gone a bit overboard. In that. <laughs> so, like anything about that speaker is insane. When when it comes to just even building it, I wonder how far down they got in it in time to build one speaker because it takes a, a take, it took them a, eight days when I remember for on the first uh, first set. To build one one speaker, I wouldn't be surprised if it's similar still. But yeah, I I don't know. I I can see them do it, but I can also see them bring out eventually an evolution of nineties. Because one would think that tech moving forward, you could do similar feats of sonic reproduction with less and just rely more on computer power. I'm not saying being a software will be flawless in this case, but... But it's the thing, at some point, you're just starting to compete with physics, right? Like, the reason why they went with the aluminum chassis on the, on the 90s was not just for the acoustics, but, like, you know, the immense amount of pressure that these things are undergoing when you have, you know four 1000 watt drivers pulling the speaker in in four different directions sure uh but would that be needed in all directions because what i'm more so say, saying is i think like because i don't really think a lot of people use the omni mode i mean if, i never used it if if you ditch that as a requirement then you can do a whole bunch of other things because 
But right. Omnimode's not a requirement. Omnimode is a byproduct of doing the acoustic compensation with the drivers firing in and out of phase or whatever different volumes and shit. Yeah, yeah, I, I I get that, but surely with uh with more computer power, that would be easier to do with less drivers to a certain extent. Mm. I mean, because like the, 50, I mean, the 50s is, already do a hell of a job. Yeah. Uh, so you, you can do a lot of it with a lot less, aka 50s. I mean, you, you would probably uh, need to make the 50s it, for sake of argument like a four-way speaker to fully compete because 90s are basically four-way speakers mm -hmm. yeah so i don't know uh, we should really ask if jeff is uh, busy <laughs> if he's not that busy then uh i can see them sort of eoling them through just asking ludicrous amounts of money for it but that's not that's where it seems to be headed. So uh, they're basically, yeah, closing people out of the market by making it ridiculous as far as the price is concerned. That's that's yeah, it's a little too much. Then again, if they can make a lot of money on people that really want to go extravagant, I'm not against it. It's just, I don't know. It's it's sort of it's unfair. Yeah. That's all there is. I mean, nothing's fair in life anymore. Yeah, surely. The, by the way, coming back to seventeens and the white ones with the the, the logo, surely they didn't first uh, make them black and then uh, laser etch it out, and then the letters come out black, right? <laughs> One would think. Hope. <laughs> this... Maybe those are printed. But I think that when you laser etch it, it just burns the paint and everything else, and 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 you know it goes through because they to me look like they're gray, not not black. Yeah. So. But anyway, if you if you want seventeens, buy the natural aluminium ones. The logos, unless you really like the logo, then buy the STB brackets <laughs> ones if you want to warm out them. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, the natural aluminium ones are the best. <laughs> That's the ticket. Yeah, and don't buy the ice grills; those are terrible. Yeah, if you if you want to buy them, I have a set available. <laughs> Freaking, they they turn yellow and stuff. I saw them in Denmark, like all yellowed and shit. I'm like, wow, yeah, don't put those in the sun. Do you think that's the same glue on the back they used as on the white uh, crown covers for your nineties? I don't think so, because I think that they don't really use the glue. They heat. Uh, I think that they saw, uh, sonically well the the fabric to the plastic grills. They don't do. They don't glue it the way they glue it on the. On the nineties, I don't think. Just my opinion. I'm sure somebody in the chat uh, has done. Well, Leo's done a whole bunch of grills, so maybe he would know. But I don't think that the glue is the same. Yeah, Mike Hunt says. Uh, Mike Hunt, <laughs> YouTube. I'm not swearing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the five just crept up uh, uh, at a nice level, but everything's jumping up now in price. Probably comma stupid. Yes, I agree. the The most annoying thing to me is that whenever B and O ups the prices, the second hand market jumps with the same rates, even if it was already on the second hand market. Because you can literally see people that uh, resell this stuff add ten percent. <laughs> Or whatever it is, B and O jumps up by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, B and O's hopping, hopping good. Yeah, those are good speakers. Oh my god, that's terrible. It's a bit of a hodgepodge, but uh, I bet you they still sound good. Yeah, but they look terrible on those stands. Oh my lord. Yeah, they're not made for them at all. <laughs> no. But to each their own, right? Yeah. 
We got his tourney tables there and all kinds of nonsense. Let me know if I'm stupid, but I kind of think the 17s also look cool without a fret on them. I don't like it without a fret. It, it, it sort of gives weird. me a, a sort of halfway cyberpunk vibe. Like, this, this is kind of cool and the, the exposed bolts and stuff. And... Mm. Uh, Lawrence asked, do we have any idea on the new price of uh, the 28s? Uh, supposedly going to 1425 or 250, yeah. And I'm can I have to check is uh, is that the price for the base one or is that with the oak version? Um, speakers, where are you? Well, I guess if you buy them in, where is the price discrepancy in, in Sweden? Yeah, Eric was showing. Yeah, buy so everything somehow in Sweden, in Sweden everything is a lot cheaper. Like, yes, the prices have gone up, but by the same percentage. But somehow, I guess you would still pay more. But if maybe if you come from a euro paying country, <laughs> you're all of a sudden not spending as much in Sweden. Which is kind of weird. Because converted it all from uh, the, 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 the sexy money they use, the sex. <laughs> the sex money. <laughs> well, it's S-E-K. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was all, always more or less give, give or take a few euro the same. But now if you go for the Harmony, it's like a grand less for the same TV, same spec. It's like, wow, that's a difference. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean you up it, but you know, keep it. <laughs> it's, it's... Yeah, it's weird how sometimes the conversions work. Uh, I wonder they... how they do like in 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 fucking Peru. <laughs> like, oh, so, so the 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 guy price that Frederick said uh, fourteen two hundred and fifty is for the with the oak version. Okay, so pimpy ones. Well, that's but, the ones you'd want. Yeah. I mean, the the black with fabric and fabric kind of looks nice, but you'd rather have the oak or the black oak or, or the smoked oak or... I would want to, I wouldn't want the fabric ones. That's that's very un bno ish in my opinion. Personally, to me, there's only really two colors that are interesting the the normal aluminium and the sort of anthracite the 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 bronze tone is okay it really has to fit the oh the gold tone is just the wrong model <laughs> i have to send another email <laughs> let's see well here i'm on the gold tone it just oh, shows yeah, you an aluminium like... one <laughs> <That's> funny <laughs> So the website is crap again. <laughs> yeah, what else is new? Like nobody checks this. Apparently not. Apparently that because the image is loaded properly for the gold tone down here, so I don't understand why they wait. Oh, so it does. What the hell do you know? So the second picture and onwards is correct. That's funny. Go further or go more. More photos. Let's see if they're all there. You know, this is just an off-putting color combo to me. I don't like it. This gives me very much like the late 70s, early 80s Miami Vice vibes where you live in Miami with awful T-shirts and way too much hair gel. And well, it's not even gel at that time. It's that sort of drippy stuff that if it gets warm, it comes out. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> never seen Miami Vice like the old one with Don Johnson. and No, no, I never watched. Only Miami Vice was GTA that I've played. <laughs> but yeah, the gold ones are awful. I don't like them. I don't like it. 
My dad, they should uh, look into somebody pasted the wrong freaking image in the library bank. That's what it is. That's like me going to a house, just freaking throwing a program in and never touching a light switch to see how it works. Yeah. Just leave. Here, Miami. Fox. Yeah, no, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's to me that's them checking the website like it's there's absolutely zero responsibility bared in 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 going through it this is it's absolutely ridiculous and they never had like i never remember that they had fucking issues with their old websites that they would show different pictures and uh like i never i never remember that like during the old bno's website times it never i don't know i just don't know where their heads are and they've cleared out the entire, I guess, what used to be the Biovision 11 assembly facility in in there to fucking build this brain of brainarium or whatever to idea land there. Then you should probably hire a couple of people to proof check your website before you guys publish everything out. Well, yeah, but even, even if you free. publish it, like just you know, check check what you did. Well, we do it for them, so that there's their savings. Yeah, but I, I bet you if I don't send them an email, then it's going to be there for the next month or two. Of course. I mean, I, I don't yeah, know I how the rest of the world is, but there's certainly a fair few countries where, like, in-shop shopping is still not fully a thing. So I, I they probably rely ever more on their bloody website, so I don't Get it. It's not even relying on the website. It's the fact that everybody goes on the website to not just to shop but to look at things. Like, what was the last time that you remember that you went to look at something in the store without looking at it online prior to it? That was before the internet was invented. Yeah. Maybe then. Not fucking now. So, like, you look at everything online. I don't shit like i went to speaking of these goofy little victorinox knives like i never bought any of them in the store i went to pick them up in the shop because i just fucked the shipping it's in town and i'm around so i might as well grab it but i bought all of it online so that's what i just don't understand like you have enough pictures in the library to pick proper colors and quite honestly, it's not like you have to have a physical speaker to be taking pictures of because everything, all of your shit is rendered now anyways. So. Yeah. Yeah, if this was a real picture, uh, you'd see somewhat through the, through the front drivers. Grill. If it was this lit, yeah, absolutely, you'd see that. You'd also see the shimmer. Uh, they look on... awesome in black with this. Like, th this way they look sick with the walnut like they look very intimidating they're really dark but they're not this dark like this is almost like there's no light emitting right but if you mm -hmm. you still get a shine like you can still tell of course. it's aluminium but here it's like this is almost like vanta black like it's just <laughs> light yeah. disappears in it <laughs> be interesting to make a speaker girl with vanta black fabric Fucking weird looking. I've heard of somebody that wrapped his fifties, uh, uh, like black, black. And apparently, Invented out, black. I don't know if that was a thing back then, but uh, it, apparently, it turned out well. So, well, if you know what you're doing, yeah. I think the bottom would be the hardest to wrap because you can disassemble the speaker a little bit, right, mm -hmm. to do it. That'd be interesting to wrap to to wrap them. That'd be interesting. I mean, uh, might actually be cheaper to wrap these uh, wings than it is for going to the bespoke department and saying, "Can I actually have the whole speaker black? <laughs> Not yeah. just most of it, please." <laughs> yeah, but those, I think those wings, yeah, they should totally anodize in black on those speakers. Yeah. They kind of match it. They look good with the uh, with the Mercedes grill, 
but anything else it looks it looks awful like if you were to go with the black fabric it's not good but it's hmm. what it's it's not really the same color in real life what? The, the 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 mercedes grill aluminium squares are not exactly the same aluminium color of the the tweeter wings no because they're polished yeah and the tweeter wings are sandblasted or glass bead blasted whatever the fuck that silky finishes that's a, that's the thing so mm, interesting so about 65% would uh go for 18s and about 35% would go for 17s well, B and O will tell us we're wrong because they didn't see that in sales at all. And if that was in sales, they probably would have kept the seventeens. <laughs> I think that also dealers didn't push them, in my opinion. Probably not. No. Like they were just something that oh yeah, but these are you know they look like that. But like you know if you want eighteens are the ones that are more iconic. Those are atrocious looking. Dude. Take those off the screen. The fucking gold bullshit. They're terrible. They look like ass. They look so cheap. They look so cheap. Yeah, it's it's. They actually look better here than in real life, in my opinion, but they did anodize the wings correctly for this one. Because <laughs> they already look bad, so they had to do it to, to just <laughs> close it all off. Like, I despise the gold shit colors. I don't understand why they do that. I guess Asia market, whatever. Yeah, Middle them. East, maybe. Yeah. I, don't like like, it. It, I don't think that'll sell well in Europe. If at all. Somebody that has no fucking taste will buy it. Because there's <laughs> always people like that. So. I just, uh, I don't get it. Uh, yeah, June, uh, June or July 15th? Uh, is June, the increase. June. Yeah. Uh, Shit. <laughs> New poll. <laughs> Do you have taste? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually very curious on that one. Oh, man. Yeah, the, I don't know. Did, did anybody of you in our audience request the gold? If so, let us know. I had one level that I've sold in gold, and I have to... I hate to admit that uh, one of Nick's buddies, really good friends, uh, are probably best friends of his, he bought gold uh, H95s. But Weirdly, on the level and on the H95s, they're not terrible. But to and, me, uh, I think he likes boys more than anything because you don't buy gold headphones, bro. Not yeah, when you work in the oil field. <laughs> Well, with all these sweaty men around you. That's right. Well, the, the, the reason I say it is because uh, the H95s in gold, the gold is the accent color, really. Not the other way around. Yeah, but that's what girls would wear. Uh, Especially hot blondes. I mean, sure. Matches the hair. So this is what Eric would wear. <laughs> hot blondes. <laughs> He's not a woman, though. <laughs> Annette, I would wear these. I'd Wait, you've okay checked? <laughs> so, I'll yeah. be joking, Eric, if you're listening. I want Willie to check. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Do they still have the Berluti ones? Or they took it off already? Uh, I, I think you can buy them, but you can only order them. I mm. don't think you can buy those online. I'm not sure about it. Now, this is what women would wear the nordic ice one well they're they're so pink on these supposedly it's an offshoot of white but to me it's pink as well to me it's pink too man i don't know like but i'm a man so i can't tell colors and shit i mean it's it's almost towards a very like light lavender color to me 
Yeah. On the balance, it's actually nice, unless it's like in full sunlight and then it, the pink comes out. But mm. which but, one was the one that looked the best? Stage with what? With the Arctic ice, because it was a stage A nine, the headphones. Uh, and what else did they do? I don't think. I think that's it. Shit! I wonder how much is A nine gonna go up to. I'm not sure everything. I I have a feeling. Uh, uh, what you call it? That like headphones and stuff are going to be left alone. There's no Nordic well, ice available. Well, they can't up the... the headphones anymore, man. That's ridiculous. Like these new EXs are what five hundred bucks. They don't know what to ask for anymore. In my opinion, I think it's too much money. It's too much money for the headphones. Uh... Also, when you look at the battery life on the portals, I was digging on it uh, just before the podcast, actually, mm -hmm. that uh, uh, the PC version have double the battery life on wireless than the Xbox ones. They get, I think, if I remember correctly, 16 hours of playback time with this uh, through the uh, 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Hmm. Maybe it might be a s slight difference in the, what you call it, the, the, the same battery, 1200 milliamp. Yeah, but the protocol, right, makes a massive difference. Hmm. So I'm borrowing one of John's videos because uh, he had all the pink stuff. It's really, really pink. It is. <laughs> Yeah, it is pink. Oh, he still has the nineties in the in the shop. Yeah. Well, so I think he also still has an eighty-eight harmony in the shop. Oh shit! Like he's really spoiled for if there's no customers. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Turn on the massive TV. <laughs> turn the nineties up. You know, the only problem with these goofy ass headphones I have is uh, those charger cases. I have a client that they bought two, whatever the esports or whatever the was before that. I don't remember because there's been so many additions to these stupid headphones and ear pods that it's not even funny. But their cases are dead, so headphones are perfectly fine, but they can't charge them anymore. You can buy the case separately if the case is broken. I wonder. No, you can. They're they're replacement part. Are they? I think you can even we'll order them from them. the website. I have to go to the car and check what the fuck the headphones are. I mean, uh, I, but it's I, something I, those in ear deals. I mean, for the E8, I'm pretty sure you can still buy the case, and for the E8 Sport, still as well, and or at least you could. Last time I checked, which was like a month ago. Mm. No, but now with the you know arrival of monkeypox, it's going to be hard to order everything. <laughs> That's what we got going on. Stop swapping bodily fluids. <laughs> <laughs> Stop licking monkeys, bro. <laughs> yes. No, I think in terms of the Nordic ice, the 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 balance was uh, the nicest. Yeah, but uh, the let me see where's the stage. The stage wasn't half terrible, but it's it's sort of chewed out. It is pink, bubblegum pink. You know what my question is like? What do you pair that with as a TV? They're all black. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe uh, that Samsung frame thing. And then yeah. instead of off, you set it to the artwork you wanted to display. Yeah, one of my clients bought that crazy TV. And I can't believe that the whole thing is one cable goes into the TV. It brings fucking power and signal to it. And then you have the processor box. So it's basically just a display panel mm -hmm. with all the guts on the outside. It's just pretty interesting how they do that. The A9 is, is fairly nice, but 
Mm. I like the legs most of it. Yeah, me too. I mean, STB, I think, also sells uh, aluminium legs with uh, the longest rear leg has like a cable channel in it, which is uh, kind of sweet. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, I mean, the B&O ones, like you see on the right here, uh, doesn't. So you still have like one wonky cable always coming out somewhere. Yeah, but if you don't have it hardware, then just on Wi-Fi, that new braided uh, fucking fabric braided power cord looks pretty sexy, dude. Sure, but it's nice that you could uh, still... I agree. It's nice that you can have that running through the back leg. But those are not polished. Like, the, the, the STB ones are polished aluminum, black and white. I mean, black and clear. Yeah. Silver, whatever. Uh... So... <laughs> Where was this? Um, uh, because Captain Jared said that on the Dutch site, or did he get an email? I forget. Uh, where there was an offer going for H Xs for three hundred ish euro. Hmm. Uh, where did I see this? Uh, it was definitely this is why people need to come and join us on discord uh, because uh, this is where we have a, a section called uh, the affordability body uh, <laughs> deals page where if people spot uh, deals and stuff uh, they let everybody know which is kind of do you have classified or people don't post on uh, yeah yeah like, yeah if they want to if they want to sell shit if you want to sell or send or I mean, uh, I don't think we're at a massive critical mass yet where that is a rolling thing. But then again, I can't see DMs, so maybe stuff happens in DMs. I mean, Mr. Roast that joined us uh, last Monday, uh, he has a bunch of uh, biograms, and I tried to rip one of him off, but he wouldn't have it. <laughs> <laughs> because it was, he has a... Uh, a 6,500, a 7,000, a biogram 4,000, a 4,002, a 6,000, uh, a 1,200, and a 1,202. It's like, I want That's one. Pretty decent stock, yeah. <laughs> Give me one. And he's like, no. It's like, please, one, stock. give me one. I'll buy it. He's like, no. <laughs> I'm glad that I'm not into this turntable shit. Honestly, I'm really glad. Because that's just so much money that I would have spent mindlessly for no reason. Just to have music on a crackly media. No. I'm very happy I'm not into that. Also, uh, speaking of faults in the new website, one that was fixed. This was on the German one. Like, how, how did you miss this? Well, you can't read anything. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, huh? <laughs> what the fuck is that? How do you, like, as a publisher, how do you center text like that and then say, cool, that fucking works. I know what it says. Yeah, because you typed it. Yeah, so they, they changed it to this now, uh, which is a lot better. Also, they inverted the picture and put it, oh, my God. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, I mean, B &O. I don't know if B &O caught this themselves, but like that was a bit of a, huh? I mean, it's also, I don't get it. I, I, is my German rusty, or does this say uh, without cable, cabulosa? And it's like, wait, but you do need a power cable, right? <laughs> like it has no battery. <laughs> Maybe this one does. So it's Mark V. You know, it's, it's got a Qi charger, so you just sit it on the desk after you're done listening to it. <laughs> well, it's not exactly. I mean, you. I guess at. Uh, yeah, it must mean wireless. I, I, I get that, but like. <laughs> but sh surely wireless. If if B and O uh, told you like this speaker is wireless, this B Lab Fifty, because of why so you go wait does it do power? Well, it's not that wireless, but it's wireless. <laughs> <laughs> it's not all the way wireless. We just call it wireless. <laughs> Fuck. 
it's, it's, it's just it's so misleading. Like, level is truly wireless speaker. Yeah, that's truly wireless, like fudge. Oh, like paid with generic enthusiast either bought or sold something through Discord. So, oh yeah, good for you, buddy. Sweet. I'm thinking of. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, listing a few things on uh, on Discord. Yeah, I got a set of I got a twenty three hundred. I got two Bio Center nine thousands, fucking freshly rebuilt, and uh, a set of Lab Nines. Henrik's favorite. Uh, where was it? Uh... I don't know. I don't uh, know what you're no, looking at. Uh, Captain Gerard uh, said private sales. If you uh, are signed up with your dealer for private sales, apparently you can get an A9 for 2,400 something, a level for 1,100 something, an EQ for BioPlay EQ for 279 euro. If you're in the Netherlands, anyway, so look at look at your email with your spam and whatnot for private sales and uh, HXs for three hundred. Like those prices are great because uh, if you haven't done it yet, sign up for that House of Bang and Olufsen thing and make sure uh, your dealer has you on the mailing list for private sales and stuff like that. Hmm. Because. Uh, I mean that's like five hundred euro off an A nine. Fuck, that's a good deal. Yeah. Private sale is over, Captain Gerard says. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> make sure you you're signed up for that sort of stuff because stuff is already expensive enough. Like. Yep. I think that's what they. I I think one of those. Uh, tactics or strategies would be too that if they're just gonna you know give deals only through private sales if you don't sign up you know with your dealer or whatnot then like you're excluded from even receiving that email i guess yeah and age 95 for 600 jesus that's a good deal because they're close if i'm not mistaken they're they're 900 now yeah they're 899 mm -hmm. if you can get them for 600 Shiitake mushrooms. I mean, that's a uh, hundred more than portals. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and then generic enthusiast says the North American private sale was hilarious. Yeah, sometimes it's shit, but I, I don't even look at. I didn't even. Yeah, I, I laughed at it. I looked at it. So try harder, people. I mean, sometimes they just. I don't know. It's sort of a nothing burger, but. An A9 for like 500 off for like a sixth of the price off uh, is a great deal because it's a fantastic speaker and it is yeah. getting a bit expensive. But if you can get like, well, uh, that's like 18% off. That's great. Like straight from B&O. Why not? Yeah. I mean, here but anyway, that what... would be like year old second hand market type of price, except you get three year warranty. Mm -hmm. some, I found some E fours under the couch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's an American sale or North American sale, I guess I could say. So I wonder, like. How are they sustaining this business if they're going to increase the pricing from everything? Like, is it going to be to the point where it's going to be the headphone company bought out or brought out some new speakers again? That's what I'm thinking that it's just they're going towards the point of uh, like we're just going to, you know, concentrate on small accessories and, and portable nonsense. Hey, these are the charging cases you can just buy off the website. Go back to E8 second gen, even fucking 200 euros for a case. I think that's why he was bitching. That's insane, dude. 
Yeah. Because then the again, they have they USB have... cables for like twenty five euros. So are you surprised? <laughs> Well, no, because those are braided with fabric and shit. They're nice. I actually have one of them. But, like, I can't justify, like, that charging case should have been at the most 100 euros. I don't give a fuck about your leather packaging on it or wrapping. Like, that's just insane. I would throw the, the headphones out, and I don't think I would ever buy BNO again for headphones for that money, if, if that's how I would have to. What is this uh, E6 motion charging dongle? Oh, okay, I see. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, I think that they just, they out to lunch. The E8. I, I still use my E8 every day. See, that's, that's reasonable, 130 euros. But two hondos, that's a little too much. I mean... I guess it's nice you can replace it. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the EQs, if you lose your earbuds or whatever, you can buy just the earbuds. I don't know. Pouch yeah. for the earphones, 50 euros. <laughs> well, at least it's not a Baluti one. <laughs> what is that? Like, it's such a weird design let's see what it is but yeah that's i don't know like that's too much money uh -huh. it's a quadrat type fabric apparently okay i guess it's resilient it's it's uh ria 0281 by quadrat limited edition of course it is limited edition Yeah, it's not for me. Also, I would never put earphones in like a pouch like this. <laughs> I mean, that's what I the bloody charging either. case is for. <laughs> so now I have to protect my charging case as well. <laughs> I have it no. Well, I mean, you can put them in your charging case and then put them both into the bag. God. That's the logic. I mean, if you uh, don't I've, eat I've, meat. I've, I've tossed this thing around and it's it's sturdy enough every time uh, my niece is over she opens it up to look at the headphones but she doesn't know her own strength and she tries to rip it like flat open and she hasn't managed so far so it's actually quite tough <laughs> like you see her every time like <laughs> like to open it further because she doesn't understand it stops here <laughs> and it's done and that's how far it opens sunny <laughs> But yeah, so far, it's, I mean, it survived the onslaught of a toddler and of me, which is not that different in the end. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's that they're a little out to lunch. So then essentially you're saying that the headphone charging case is more money worth than the headphones or earphones themselves and the tech in them. Is uh, they're not? Because how much are those headphones altogether? Uh, four hundred euro. So it's it's an it's a surcharge of like forty euro if you buy them separate. Yeah, that's stupid. The case shouldn't be as expensive as the headphones because there's not enough tech in it. What's the there? There, it's a fucking battery with a with a. I guess a, a, a copper coil for wireless charging. That's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not so, saying it's it's the, the most uh, comprehensive uh, tech or ex like... There ain't nothing in there. But yeah, those earphones, man, guys, like you just gotta... Can we have some like speakers, please? Or some, maybe a new processor for TVs? I have a feeling it's it's it's. I have what I sort of hear every so often is that they want to do X Y Z yada yada yada, and then when the where the tire hits the road, it's like we can't get any of these chips. We can design all we want, but when it comes to building uh, anything, we can't meet price requirements. 
unless we build something shitty and then charge exorbitant amounts of money for it. And do you want to do that? Well, they're doing it with the headphones, in my opinion. Because... But the headphones are actually quite good now. Like, they're not, not of yesterday. Like, do you have any complaints, really, about the portals? No, but I have a complaint that there are 17 different kinds of headphones to choose from. And, and they have, if for your home stereo, what do they got right now? A fucking 18s and 28s and 50s? That's it? I mean, there's six headphones now. Yeah, but their core products, what do they have? If you think about it, like for listening to music, yes, you can listen to music, you can buy a level, you can buy an A9. That's not like some people like to have a, you know, if you want to surround, you can't go any further than what you have behind you right now because they're out price, uh, they're pricing the 90s out of reach completely. Yes. So, yeah, I'm, shouldn't there be a little more speakers? Like, I remember when I first started with BO, you know, we had. Lap fours, lap three, four, five. There was still six thousands, eight thousands. Uh, then there were lab nines. Then yeah. there were uh, one, two. Well, no, that's when not that's not when I worked. That's already ten years later, right? Mm. And then there was uh, basically a uh, lap twelves that came out shortly after, and then seventeens, and then the eighteen. So. You had nine different pairs of speakers in the shop to pick from. Now you have nine different pairs of same speaker to pick from in different colors. That's all they're doing. You have, like I said, there's 18s, maybe 18s. 17s. If, if they're not, some uh, dealers still uh, you know, sit on maybe a pair or two. Then you got the 28s, the 50s, and then the rest is cash and carry. And the biggest one of them is uh, A9. That's it. Yeah. That's sad. Oh yeah. I. Uh, I, I like they don't look at it that way. I don't think like they. I think that they should take a step back and just like oh shit. Oh, and the lab eleven that is behind me that was also there, and the lab two for God's sakes, and the lab eight, nine, nineteen that also came out. So there was a plethora of speakers to pick from. And I understand, you know, like the eight thousands and eight thousand twos, like those were trinkling on their way out but they were such an iconic product that they were hard to discontinue i think that's partially why they still have the a9 because it's so iconic i wonder if it's somewhat of an oopsie that they walked into a, a design icon with it mm -hmm. no the a9 is awesome because uh, even the beer sound one and two are very, something really special Somehow, I don't think the balance will be over time. No. I mean, it's a very capable speaker, but it's not as iconic as the as the A nine. Balance is a subdued somewhere in the corner of the shelf. Don't notice me, but I'll be playing awesome sound. That's basically what the what the balance is, in my yeah. opinion. Uh, Mr. Rose says, I think they should do a re-imaging of the Form 1 headphones with added bass for post-1990 music and call them the Form 1C. He'd buy it. Oh, God, that's going to be awful. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they came up with like some sort of a Form 2, you know, homage speakers Please. i mean uh, headphones i mean uh, in their core products isn't almost the stage like the the core speaker product at this point in what like the entry level yeah or connecting anything to a tv of any kind that's it so, so in my opinion what they should do is they should come up with the stage mark 2b or whatever you want to call that nonsense uh, maybe make it a little bigger so it can underscore uh, larger TVs and maybe put some power link sockets into it. Maybe throw a WISA module in there so you can connect wirelessly and have that thing. Because I'm sure that if you built it bigger, because obviously it's not going to be the same form factor, no, but can't. if you had jammed that stupid with DSSE board in there, then you basically have a very capable center channel processor 
which I don't think many uh, many companies do now, other than I don't know, probably Sonos. I'm just looking. Do I still have that old DSP board here? And I... Yeah, but it wouldn't look the same. Like it wouldn't look the same. No, but it's the one from the Eclipse, right? Mm hmm. Which is also technically sort of a soundbar. So. But yeah, I think that would be. Uh, no, I have it downstairs. I'll I'll take it out next time uh, for people. There'd be wanna, something to consider if they want to have another look at it. Uh, generic right. enthusiast asked, "Do speakers like the balance overlap with BioLab? Sort of, but they almost don't by their exclusion of PowerLink in. Mm -hmm. In terms of possibilities or in terms of capabilities, sound wise." Like the balance is so capable, it's it's crazy for the size, and yes. it kind of scared me comparing it because I immediately was looking at my eighteens and seventeens. Like, can you guys do this? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, then again, it's also like it has like eight hundred watts of power built in. <laughs> it is. Uh, yeah, it's. It's a stouty little speaker. Is it two five and a quarter inch drivers firing opposite ways? And I think each of them has a two hundred watt amp. <laughs> it's just like wow. Fuck! So they put like a Bio Lab Eleven into this thing, more or less. Yeah. But th that actually is capable because the yeah. Lab Eleven. I'm I'm very under impressed uh... with uh, with how it sounds. I don't know if it's just because the V1, but uh, it doesn't have much much balls. Yeah, uh, two 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 hundred watt class D uh, for the five and a quarter inch woofers, two hundred watt for the full range, two hundred watt for the other full range, and one fifty mm -hmm. for the tweeters. Like, so yeah, that's quite that's got quite a bit of twenty juice. from twenty six hertz, like. I mean the the bass falls on its butt more or less at the uh, slightly above the 18 slightly below the 17s but it's also a much smaller package but the the mm -hmm. it has a lot more tech in it as well like it has yeah. its own own sources and but I mean the the 18 sort of drops off 40 hertz uh, is about the low end of a of an eighteen. This thing goes down to twenty six, which is crazy. Yeah, it's a good speaker. It's just not. I mean, it's not that it's far not off of the frequency can... range of a twenty eight. <laughs> no, but that's the, the only problem is that you can't power link them. Like, there's no. It's a standalone, pairable via Google bullshit. Yeah, and in the you app can, now. You can pair it in the app. I was going to ask if you can do it in the app now. So, yeah. Boo-hoo. But that's... Well, the thing what is... What are the odds of people that buy a balance? The odds of them having it join in together is probably very low. And if they do, then it's probably going to be a speaker system that one is in, let's say, upstairs somewhere and the other one is in the living room somewhere where they don't think... I don't think they would ever reside side by side as a stereo pair. Unless you purposely bring them down, but then what do you only listen to music because you can't put a TV to it? Yeah, the the, the latency is too much. Unless you have mm -hmm. a, a a way of B and O controlling it. If B and O, look, generic enthusiast is uh, asking or saying that it would be in a go with the way of Sonos, so is the balance of the surround speakers. I think that with the Mozart platform, that would, might be possible if the TVs would be on that same uh, protocol. Because then you could technically diverge the channels uh, via IP, right? And just mm -hmm. sitting on everything sits on the network. Uh, I think that's possible. I think what BNO should also consider doing is, uh, I don't know if that's even like feasible or not, but like use PoE as much as possible. Like the Halo wall bracket should be an RG45 plug with the PoE accepting port. Then you can just have it as a wall uh, remote, 
but it's constantly powered off the switch. It's on the network, hardwired, never fucking falls off. With a Halo, that's possible. Yeah, but you gotta do a micro USB adapters and nonsense and shit. So yeah, but you just hang that in the wall cavity. Well, we have that luxury. You don't. No. <laughs> so that's the that's the that's the catch twenty two, right? So. Yeah. No, I mean this is if you go to speakers, right? This is all speakers and. It looks a bit barren that also in terms of all speakers, you maybe it's because they sell more and they know more, but like you're halfway down the page before you even see a beer lab of any kind. Mm -hmm. Plus the cones are discontinued now, right? So yeah, they got the offers and offers and then boom, you have, uh, yeah, there's the 28s, the 18s. Oh, I forgot about the shape, of course. Uh, unaffordable or unobtainable 90s and uh, 50s. I think they're having a hard time getting rid of the last 20s. Now the 28s are out. <laughs> yeah. Because this is really the odd duckling. Uh, I bet you these are uh, for sale as long as supplies last. I mean, they're not they're bad speakers per se, but... I don't like the look of them. I just don't like the fact that they just took the fucking, basically, lab nines, knocked the chin off it, took the lens from the 18s and slapped it on top, called it a new speaker. Personally, I Design think they're wise. better looking than the nines. I like the nines. But the nines like the sound nines a bit better. The era, they're a bit the, more... the, the era that the nine, nines were in. like these. I think that kind of a shape of a speaker has passed its design time. I don't yeah. think they should have ever gone into the 20s. But that's just my onion. But they probably tried to do something similar for the 9s as they did for the 8000s. What? As in revive them with the acoustic lens look. Uh, a bit more modern. Except maybe they never understood that the 9s weren't that iconic. Yeah. So nobody really cares. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fives and ones, and ones were similar price, but ones are way more iconic than nines were in my in my sort of uh, world where I hear people talk about B and O speakers. Same for the mm -hmm. Pentas, because just their sheer size, it's like fuck, these are tall. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Sandeep says there seems to be a Wi-Fi router on the page. Yeah, that's what you need for this network stuff. <laughs> for network connected speakers, they thought they'd better sell a router with them. <laughs> so true. But if, if B&O were to ever have, I don't know, like a, a, a WISA, like a, a, the new transmitter two, let's say, Mozart-based network-attached speakers. Mm -hmm. If they could have something like that for for a stereo pair of balances or whatever, or levels, that would be great. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I just, I, I think that they're... <sighs> they're, I think that their portfolio is suffering tremendously now with uh, what they have. Yeah, I mean, to offer. in terms of speakers, like, it's 18s, 28, like, well, 20s, 28s, 50s, 90s, and that's basically it. Well, and a 19, and a but... And the shape. Because you can consider shape as a speaker too, right? I yeah. guess. Billy Ballbag uh, says a core with HDMI arc would be nice. Yeah, I mean, if Blue Sound Node can uh, do that. Do that. that. Where the hell can't be an O? Right. I don't know. Maybe it's just too much money for them to put into the R&D. But I don't think that that's just so crazy of an idea to have, you know, have the, the core do more. Well, they or already have the sound different. stripping more or less from the stage. You can just rip that off, right? And cut off everything mm -hmm. you don't need. 
Yeah. I mean, and make it somewhat limited in terms of uh, EQ or whatever, like uh, treble plus minus, bass plus minus, uh, good enough for most things. Especially well, since it was the always most, like that. most of the newer stuff you can do its own room EQ anyway. Yes. Hmm. I mean, because if if you're a beginning B and O lover now and two balances as main speakers would actually suffice for quite a bit of uses yes and they also don't take up that much space uh sound enormous you have the they're basically mini beer lab 90s it's it's the only one where the room compensation will tell you where the walls are which is kind of funny <laughs> i mean i don't that know that is interesting I don't know if that they they changed it or if it was because back then it was the first was it the first Mozart I think it was yeah it was the first Mozart but Mozart. when you ever you did like I had it sitting up here right and the, the you go to room sweep and it's, it told you like we notice there's a wall behind us but if you change it it's like we notice there's a wall next to us <laughs> is this correct interesting and then you went yes <laughs> you understood this correctly. <laughs> That's cool. That is freaking cool. And then you can, ha again, like everything else, you could have it wide to omni to directional. Mm -hmm. But then also directional, you could choose, do you want it straight or do you want it that way? Yeah, that's pretty slick that, they, they, that you're able to do it. I don't know what the actual practical use of it is. Unless you have the speaker like in the I middle know, of the room, it felt a bit clunky in the sense that you would have to take your phone out. No, I'm now to the left and now I'm to the right of it. Mm. So I'd rather have yeah. it in the the half mode projecting out. That's and most likely it's something that you can't program into the gateway that you could change with. So I, it kind maybe? of sucks. I don't know. I think you could store you could it under that, a but... my button, but. Uh, that I think you could do it that way, or you could do it in uh, if it does the same as the core, when it converts to shape. Uh, you inject sound one, two, and three commands. Sound one is the band on the wall, two is the stereo, and the three is the following, right? Or just it makes the whole thing mono. Um, question for the chat: If B and O could uh make more speakers by dropping one product right now what should they drop something like an explore or a beer sound one or two or do we want to keep the beer sound one or two or probably Sweet. chat's favorite should they drop the emerge it'll make steve cry but <laughs> i would drop the well the edge is already done anyways right yeah edge is done i would drop that I don't think I, I don't think they should have discontinued Bio Sound One and Two. I think they should just re. I'm not sure they're fully discontinued or if they're EOL, which is essentially the same. But mm -hmm. but I, I I I don't know. I just like that. But the thing it's is, and O ish. I I understand, but like the aluminium is very hard to produce at the moment for the energy prices and that sort of thing. And secondly, it's still also on the old platform, right? It's not Mozart yet. So yes. at one point or another, you either have to revamp it or you have to let it go. Yes. And the beer sound one is it still up here somewhere? I mean, it's seventeen hundred euro for a beer sound one, or like twelve fifty for a level. Like, yeah, twelve ninety nine. Right like, it's it's kind of crazy that, I mean, a level being four hundred euro less. I, I almost don't see how you're gonna, unless you really does that aesthetic is four hundred euro worth more to you, when mm. everywhere else the level is better. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, 1250 new. How much is the BSN one or BSN two go up? 2800 euro. 
Holy fuck. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like it doubled. Yes. Well, that was pounds for him, but even so, that was probably 1,500 euro at the time. So it, it, as good as uh, went up. What's 18... the Beal Sound one? Scroll down. 1,700 euro. Wow. I think when that launched, think... that was like a grand or 1,100 or something. Yeah. Seventeen hundred, twenty three hundred bucks. Wow, that's insane. Yeah, but th this is what I mean, right? Like, so are you going to keep this with the added cost of current aluminium production being so excessively expensive? Because there, I like if they say we have to up this to even make it profitable, I sort of understand. I just wish they hadn't upped it for next to no reason other than we can New Year, whatever. It's more. Mm. <laughs> it's more now <laughs> but if you were to yeah like this versus a level like yes i love the look of it but it's it's not worth the difference to me because the level is better everywhere else oh yeah i mean it's easier to carry it has a longer battery life as if i'm remembering right it doesn't look as good but it's it's stereo yeah, it's like practical. proper it, it, it like it has a tweeter mid and two woofers, whereas this is just tweeter woofer and that's it, literally. I mean, it doesn't sound bad, but the level is just better. Yeah. Yeah, 1250 to 2300 pounds in three quarter years. Yeah. That's three, crazy. No, three to four years. That's three to four years. <laughs> they don't, they're not that gouging. <laughs> In nine months, yeah, we we seventy five percent of the price. <laughs> right on. Should have bought it when you got it. <laughs> Thirteen fifty. Still, it's a lot. It's thousand. It's nine hundred fifty pounds. For God's sake, that's yeah. a lot of increase. But in terms of what they could get rid of, really, uh, like, does anybody like the emerge really? Because I think this I is don't care like for it. like a ninety ten product in the wrong way. Yeah, six hundred bucks or pounds. Yeah, for the the black for one. Oh, I agree. Get rid of the beal. I mean, it's seven fifty for the other one. Is. Jesus Christ! Compact Wi Fi home speaker. I mean, seven fifty for this thing is like, God. <laughs> My wife, I thought it was free Sunday, so yeah. I don't agree with it. I mean, I don't fully hate it, but the price. I don't mind it in this. I don't mind it in the in the wood, but I cannot stomach it in in the black plastic router shape. It just looks it, it looks like a fucking router, man. I mean, that is like a Cisco access point. If you put a Cisco sticker on it, dude, somebody would have thought that's a router. Probably, yeah. Like, why does it only have one Ethernet port? Because <laughs> this is a wireless extender, bro. <laughs> it's an access point. <laughs> <laughs> this is just an access point. I mean, I don't fully hate it, like I said, but that's already... Not great it's bad. having your portfolio. And it's then, bad looking. I mean, I, I know Steve says it sounds better than an M3. And I personally, to my ears, it's marginally so. But an M3 was 300 euro. Like and even, it looks like a pencil uh, cup. I mean, this you can buy two M3s for the versus the black one. Yeah, let alone if you're not getting into the wood yet. No, that's ridiculous. I don't... The Emerge should go... But then again, like, they already have nothing on the portfolio, so what do you replace that nonsense with? Like, I don't think... Would you not just go all out on the on the level? I would versus this, yeah. Cut your cost and apply the cost saving to the level and start trying to sell the level like crazy. Because everybody loves a level, more or less. Mm -hmm. I mean,
mean, there's a few diehards uh, out there that don't like it, but everybody basically likes the level. <clears throat> I mean, the level is 90-10 the other way, where 90% of the people love it. Yeah. I mean, and if you're Henrik, you can take it to the bathroom and control your lights in the bathroom. <laughs> I just do it with the keypads and occupancy sensors. That's a big remote yeah. to carry around. I mean, Sandeep says, can they actually make a uh, BLAP pair for le less, let's say, five to seven grand anymore? Well, the 18s nope. they can apparently clearly still make. I, w I wonder if there's somewhat in a trap between like everything needs to be super duper smart uh, versus just speakers. Like, here you go, it's tuned as we like it. Customizability is out the window. Like, I don't still don't mind that about 18s. They are what they are, and they're good at what they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think that the Internet of Things and everything has uh, gotten the best of everybody. Everybody wants. Yeah, it doesn't make position, everything better, I, I, though. It might, uh, this house, my all the appliances have a fucking Wi-Fi module in them. The, with the QR code that you can set them up. What the fuck am I going to set up on my fridge? What, I got to change my filter notification? Did I get an email now from that? Like, why the fuck does Samsung need to know my email to, to send me a, a notification that my filter needs to be changed? Or, or whatever that does. I don't understand it. Or where the fuck do I have a need to be somewhere in Kananaskis in the woods? Like, my mom is now not even probably having signal when she's going to turn on the fucking stove. <laughs> Yeah, what? but uh, the, the, they they sell it as a, a convenience, but it's really like we need to know what you do whenever you do because this data is valuable. Like in terms just, of appliances, I'd ride, rather buy the dumb versions. This is why I don't have any of the Google Voice nonsense in any of my B&O. Well, that's starting to become harder and harder to get, man. Mm-hmm. Because they're stuffing that shit into everything nowadays. Correct. Yes. I don't like the fucking that at Ethernet all. port. And what the hell are you? What for? I remember uh, it was basically uh, Sandeep and I against the world uh, for the last two years, and now everybody's like, "Yeah, we actually don't like this in everything." <laughs> I never said I liked it in, in in any of that shit. Like I'm, I I I do like the Google Voice Assistant, but. Now, after not living with it for a few months since I've been here, I don't miss it. I actually just, I'm going back to fucking using the remote control. Sandeep's oven and fridge are on Wi-Fi. <laughs> and there's an app. I know there's an app. What the fuck do you need that? Well, I Google Voice is Satan in your home, for sure. But then everything listens, fuck. Yeah, as soon as you sleep. Kill. <laughs> Vote for Trudeau. <laughs> well, in Canada, sure. God, I'd probably do that in some frequency because people are fucking brainwashed. They've got them in again. <laughs> We've got them till 2025. Hopefully, Yay. he leaves on the BNO's anniversary 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who will go further or first at this point? Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, twenty eights are still probably the best. The best the deal. Power, it's not really value anymore. I mean, I don't know. Maybe the. I wonder why they were so adamant about getting rid of the seventeens. Maybe they were hoping of replacing it, and then all this nonsense hit. What. But, that they sort of EOL the 17s and thinking like, oh, we're going to make something new. And then the whole Rona and supply mm. chain shit hit. And it's like, fuck, well, we already canceled making more of it. So what do we do now? Yeah. It's... I don't know because uh, currently where it's going, the... but it's sad. Yeah. I mean, if you want some actual B&O speakers, which... I mean, th this their ad phrase of uh, you could take the acoustic out and it would still be apt. As in, 18s are a work of art. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, acoustically, that's neither here nor there, but they, they do sound nice. But that this is basically the, the, the entry point is a bit silly. I mean, I bet you we would have been bitching uh, our asses off if the 17s by now were like four and a half, five grand. Yeah. But... But at the end of the day, like you're looking at a high end company. Rolex doesn't start at fucking seven hundred bucks either, right? Like it's just that's you know. No, but you can get a watch for like four grand. Yeah. I mean, currently at Bang and Olufsen, in terms of the actual speakers, you can't get anything under more or less eight grand euro. Yeah. Which is uh. They're missing stuff like. In my opinion, something on a, along the size of a BioLab Four or BioLab Three capability. I think that that's that market is definitely there. And quite honestly, like those speakers, you could honestly use them as an upsell to a small home theater setup for people. You know what I mean? Now, because you're either sitting at at fucking almost eight grand to bleed out for rear channels if you have whatever you have at the front. Or secondhand market, but then you know you gotta go for the power links and all that nonsense. Because if you don't have, you know, if you if you're not gonna go with the seventeens, but they're missing stuff that is uh, a smaller. Yeah, I I would agree. I think that I think the entry level should be five grand. In my eyes, yeah. five thousand euros for a set of speakers of some sorts. Maybe you will have just a little bit of aluminium trim on it, because obviously that that's what you know sets that prestige apart. Uh, but you know, it's that fucking that fiber reinforced plastic. I don't think is that expensive to mold and make. And just throw some boards in it and, and and some drivers tune it proper. And Bob's your uncle, man, and you have a small set of small speaker. In it. At at the entry point, it's less important that it's super finely done and all aluminium, let's say. Mm -hmm. It just needs to look nice and sound the business. Yeah, it's got to sound business because that's what will get people to spend more money on B&O. That's what got me to. I mean, something like a balance where in terms of you go, wow, but then it should actually look better. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. And preferably have paralleling. So, but anyways, on that note. Yeah, uh, thank you, Eric, for joining us. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Good luck in Sweden, Eric. (laughs) All right, let's move on. (laughs) Thank you, everybody, for watching. Hope you had a good time. Uh, Please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't yet already. And uh, leave comments uh, under it. It all helps in the YouTube algorithm. And uh, we'll be back again tomorrow on uh, Twitch and uh, for the super cool channel members. And uh, it will either see See tomorrow or next week. Bye, everybody. Bye.